Welcome to the fire pit instructional video. The key to a great fire is proper operation. And today we're gonna to talk you through everything you need to be a master at building those smokeless flames. In this video, you'll find the following sections. Overview, startup, refueling, cooking, shutdown and pack up, charging out and up, quick troubleshooting, and app use. Okay, here we go. Let's get to know the component parts of your fire pit. You've got the USB rechargeable airflow pack, two handles for easy carry, burn chamber with collapsible legs, fuel rack, and grill grate. Here's how it all comes together. Now that we're ready to burn, it's time to commit these three tips to memory. Seriously, remember them. One, make sure your airflow pack is charged. Two, build up your fire gradually. Three, let the jets do their job. Fire Pit's combustion system injects the fire with air along key points. Before you head out, make sure your pack has power so you can keep that fan going for a great fire. Speaking of that great fire, it's gotta start small. Just like your classic campfire, you need to build a base coal bed and then work your way up to larger pieces. If you just throw in a big old piece right at the start, you're gonna get some smoke. Once you have built that fire up, remember that there are 51 jets in there looking to help you out. Let them do their job. Don't block them by overstuffing the chamber, by extending wood beyond the chamber, or by laying firewood flat against each other. Those jets need space to feed the fire with oxygen. And as a reminder, Fire pit is intended for surfaces like gravel, packed dirt, sand, concrete, or a heat-proof slab. We do not recommend burning directly on your lawn or deck as it could damage your surface. Before fire, there's fuel. Here's a quick list of what falls into good fuel and what makes for bad fuel that can lead to smoke or damage. The fire pit is designed to fit standard 16-inch firewood, but first, get a starting pile together of smaller pieces and kindling to build the base of your fire. Using the fuel rack in the lower position and with the aid of a little fire starter, build up gradually from small to larger pieces and keep the fan on the first or second setting. You'll start to see a coal bed form and that's when you can start adding larger pieces. As you build, make sure that your fuel is stacked offset from each other so that no flat surfaces are laying on top of each other. Remember, gotta let those jets do their job. If you have the grate on, carefully lift it up or slide out away from the airflow pack so it cantilevers to one side. You don't have to remove it completely. With caution, place the log inside the fire and, you guessed it, remember to let the jets do their job. Make sure fuel is placed with gaps in between so airflow can access the fire. If you need to, stoke your fire to create those gaps. And don't put your wood past the jets, it'll just smoke. Pro tip. When you're refueling with larger pieces of wood, you can crank the fan up to turbo to help it along. Remember to be super careful during refueling, as this is when sparks are most likely to occur. Fire Pit's hibachi style top is intended for direct contact grilling only. It's not designed for cooking with pots and pans. For cooking with charcoal, use the upper fuel rack position and light according to charcoal directions. Pro tip. You can crank the fan up to high to help the charcoals catch, but then turn it down once you start to see those coals glow. That'll prolong your cooking time. And a quick heads up, if you're cooking meat, as with any grill, the grease runoff may create some smoking. That's the fat, not your fire. And your flames should return back to normal once it's burned off. If you want to keep something warm or lightly toasted, cantilever the grill grate for indirect heat. And for those looking to cook with skewers, make sure you soak them in advance so they don't burn and use tongs to remove them after cooking. They get hot. Pro tip, planning to cook then hang? When you're done with your charcoal, carefully lower the fuel rack one side at a time and the coal bed acts as a natural fire lighter for your firewood. Put the fan on turbo and watch it catch. Let's start with the most important thing. Never, ever pour water directly into the burn chamber. That's gonna corrode your system and possibly damage your electronics and never try to dump out a live fire. It's dangerous and it's not worth it. 
Allow the fire to burn down to cold ash. If you want, you can run the fan on turbo to expedite the process. If a few small embers remain, carefully open the ash door with a heat-proof utensil and pour into a dugout hole or ash pan and fully extinguish by covering with dirt or water. If you're at the beach, never bury live embers. Those hidden coals can lead to someone ending up with a burned foot if they walk by. With embers completely burnt out, the metal body of the fire pit will cool down in approximately five to 10 minutes. Turn the airflow pack off by pressing and holding for three seconds. Pro tip, take good care of your fire pit by cleaning out remaining ashes through the trap door using a standard painter's brush. Wipe down and dry thoroughly with a rag. If you're away from home, fold up the legs by pressing the button at the joint and use the handles for easy carry to your car. Or if you've got the solar carry case, place over the fire pit, secure with buckles underneath, and you can carry it over the shoulder. If you're already home, we recommend storing the fire pit in a cool, dry place indoors. Fire Pit features a USB rechargeable airflow pack that can run for up to 24 hours based on your fan speed. The battery of your airflow pack is indicated by the lower LEDs. Alternatively, you can see real-time battery life on the free BioLite app. When the fire pit is not in use, you can detach the pack and use it as a power bank to charge other devices. As a reminder, that'll lower your runtime for the airflow. To recharge the airflow pack, charge up via the micro USB by connecting to a power source. The LEDs on the side will begin to light up in sequence to let you know it's charging. We recommend charging the system up at least once every six months to keep your battery in good shape. If you own the solar carry case, you can charge up the airflow pack easily and automatically by connecting the integrated panel and leaving your system out in direct sun. Note, if you put it in a spot with partial shade, your charging efficiency will go down. Get it in full sun. Fire Pit is pretty magical, but it still abides by the laws of physics. If you can sort out the science, you can sort out the smoke. Let's take a look at some potential situations and how to manage them. Smoky during startup? Check that your fuel is dry and that you're starting with small pieces to build a coal bed. Got a lot of bark in your fuel supply? Try removing it with a hatchet and using the inner wood source. Smoke coming out of the end cap? That might mean a log is touching the metal directly, which is essentially snuffing it out. Adjust and give it some room to breathe and combust properly. If you're in windy conditions, that can lead to smoke because the gusts can disrupt our airflow. Place the airflow pack upwind and try to block the breeze as much as possible or relocate the fire pit to an area that's a bit more protected. Smoky while cooking? If you're cooking meat or food that's been oiled or buttered, that's fat causing the smoking. Once the drippings burn off, the smoke should go away, just like a typical grill. Seeing some smoke right after refueling? Stoke it a bit to ensure that no flat surfaces are stacked against each other. If you can't move anything around, you may have overstuffed the chamber and blocked critical airflow. Let the jets do their job. Relatedly, Check to make sure no wood is extending beyond the jets or else the air can't reach it. Fan won't go beyond the first setting? Check your battery. Chances are you're in low power mode and the airflow system is running on low to ensure that you still have improved combustion, but it's telling you it needs to be recharged ASAP. The fire pit is fully operable manually, but for those who want it, you've got Bluetooth access right from the palm of your hand. Here's how to get remote control right from your phone. Download the app from your device's app store and make sure your devices can talk to each other. Enable Bluetooth on your phone and press the airflow pack once to wake up the system. Battery LEDs will illuminate, but the fan will be off. Open the app on your phone and it'll ask if you're looking to connect to one of two Bluetooth products, the base lantern or the fire pit. Select fire pit. The app will start searching for nearby devices and eventually a name starting with fire pit will appear. Click connect. It'll ask you to rename it to your desired nickname during setup. Once you're connected, you'll be able to turn your airflow pack on and off, access fan speeds, and get real-time feedback on the battery life of your system. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching this video and for taking time to master the art of a good fire. We hope you have a great time with your fire pit. Now get burning.